Hello YouTube, it's Mr. Mags here, and today on Stupid Nintendo Articles, I'm going over an article titled, 10 Ways the Xbox One is Secretly Beating PS4 and Nintendo Switch. So, before I go into the article itself, I just need to say something up front. What culture? Your website is trash. It, it just is. Because, when I was trying to set up this video, the the web page kept doing this it kept scrolling on its own just out of nowhere for no reason and of course and also it had that thing where there was music playing or there was an ad playing at the bottom of the page so i had to scroll down and stop that from happening and then tell like a minute later another ad would play like that oh that's so infuriating and probably the worst thing this this website does is almost every single article they write is on multiple pages. You can have it all on one single page, but you have to have a, a membership in order to do that, which I am not willing to give you my email and whatnot, so just, oh, just everything, <laughs> everything wrong with, with these, with dumb websites and dumb articles, it's just, oh, it's just a microcosm of all that. So, the trashy website out of the way first. Um, Going into the article now. <sighs> this is just... I've seen quite a number of articles and whatnot. It did that again. It just scrolled randomly again. Why did you do that? Uh, okay. Okay, whatever. I will fight through this. <laughs> Ten ways the Xbox One is secretly beating PS4 and Nintendo Switch. There seems to be this... <sighs> motif... In recent years, honestly, where you're secretly winning something. Like, there's little things here and there that's making you win overall. When, like, really, if you're secretly winning, is it really a win? So, like, that wording alone it doesn't make any sense. Now, if, if it was, like, ten ways the Xbox One is better than PS4 and Nintendo Switch, that's more of an opinionated statement. I could understand that more, I could roll with that more. But you saying these are ways Xbox One is secretly beating. If it was even just 10 ways Xbox One is beating P did it again, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, 10 ways PS4 is, or 10 ways Xbox One is, is beating PS4 and Nintendo Switch, I'd be relatively fine with that as well. I'd probably do an article on its Regardless, but still, I wouldn't have as much, I wouldn't have as much problem with the title itself. But because you're saying it's secretly winning, that doesn't really sound like a win to me. So I just, oh, and there, there's many other articles and videos and whatnot out there that have similar title motifs like that. So with all that out of the way, let's get into the article itself. This underdog has many hidden strengths. Everyone loves an underdog, right? That doesn't seem to be the case with Microsoft in this console generation. After losing the initial launch battle to the much more popular PS PS4, the Xbox One has never been able to improve upon the infamously rocky launch. And yeah, that legitimately was one of the worst launch scenarios of anything ever. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> with the recent success of the Nintendo Switch, Microsoft is at the bottom of the pecker order pecking order, a place they haven't been since the original Xbox. The broken promises and constant plan switching, as well as a lack of any substantial exclusives, have, has really ruined the reputation of the Xbox One. Meanwhile, PlayStation and Nintendo are knocking out high-quality exclusives left and right, which is starting to make it look like all hope is lost for the big black box. Yeah, everything they said there is completely correct. Um, <laughs> Like, legitimately, as of right now, I see literally zero value in buying an Xbox, mainly because any big exclusive that I could potentially be interested in, like Cuphead, I could just buy on my, on my Windows. So I don't really see a reason to buy an Xbox, even if I was just getting it for the exclusives, because they're not really getting exclusives. So, yeah, literally everything about the Xbox right now, from my personal opinion, seems, it just kind of seemed like, 
I would prefer to get a P play, yeah, PlayStation 4 over an Xbox because, you know, it release, you know, base PS4, base, base Xbox One. It plays third-party games better. It has better exclusives. I, so, yeah, everything he says here is right, in my opinion. Despite all the admittedly big problems, the Xbox One is actually pulling ahead of its competition in many subtle ways. If Microsoft can keep adding these sorts of things in the future, they can slowly win back the love of their fans and hopefully pull in more people. Here's hoping that the competition can start being more even. Can start, can start being more even soon. Yeah, sorry, I read that wrong. I At this point, at this point, there's no possible way the Xbox would even come close to matching the PS4. Potentially, it could about level out on with the Switch in the end. We're still not sure exactly how well the Switch will, you know, will do. I'm, I mean, it's looking like it'll, you know, continue to do be really successful. But right, but right now, we're not entirely sure. It hasn't, you know, it hasn't passed the Xbox One, of course, because it's only been out for about a year. But it's looking like it could easily pass it within the next year or two. And with the Xbox One selling, I think, about 10, 15-ish million units, if even that, a year. Actually, I think it was way less than that. Yeah, I think it sold about maybe less than 10 million last year. I could be wrong about that, but I don't think the Xbox One has any chance of, of passing or even coming close to PS4 anytime soon. So... I guess best case scenario, they take these little, these, these little wins that you're, that you're saying here and just, you know, implement them into the next Xbox, which hopefully there is a next Xbox and maybe they can, you know, maybe they can do better next time. But, but as of right now, let's just see what exactly it is he's referring to with the first one on the next page. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds exclusivity. Okay. One oh my gosh, Papa Beds. Forgot about that. Ugh. That's, that's, wow, this there are two separate Papa Beds. This website is terrible. Oh my gosh. I get I get you have to pay the bills, but still, like two separate Papa Beds? Okay, whatever. Whatever. One exclusive did not a console make. And when Player Unknown Battleground is literally the only exclusive, really, that this console has of any real value, you know, to most people, I'm just not really sure if if you can really call that a win. Um, especially since Xbox has recently been kind of known for, you know, dropping exclusives like not, you know, dropping, like, onto the console, literally dropping them, like, canning them, like, you know, canceling them. With Scalebound and that new Fable game were both canceled. So, yes, Player Unknown Battleground is, is, a, is a nice thing to have for your console, but especially when there's other, when there's other Battle Royale games like Fortnite, which he's going to talk about, that is on PlayStation 4, I don't really see why how PUBG's exclusivity is a big deal, but let, let's see what he has to say. If we can just ignore Fortnite's rise to power for a second, let's remember why everyone got so hooked on the Battle Royale genre in the first place. Okay, so you're just gonna ignore Fortnite completely. That's... I don't like that. Especially since Fortnite generally is more popular now than PUBG is from what I can tell so uh, yes Xbox getting PUBG is I guess a big deal but PlayStation still is Fortnite I'm not sure if Fortnite's on Xbox I should have looked at it before now but I'm, I don't think it is so PlayStation at least PlayStation has Fortnite so I don't really understand how having PUBG is such a big deal when they have Fortnite for free mind you Fortnite is free on everything. PUBG, yeah, about $30. PUBG may not be as popular as it was a year ago, but it's still one of the most played and one of the most beloved games of this generation. The fact that it was actually up for Game of the Year last year, despite only being a multiplayer experience, should remind you how popular PUBG truly is. 
and I personally did not at all appreciate PUBG being a contender for Game of the Year. I felt since it was still early access, since it was multiplayer only, and I, I'm i personally not the biggest fan of Battle Royale games in general, that's just my opinion, but still, just I didn't like that it was up for Game of the Year over something like a Neo or Nier Automata or even Cuphead. Just there are so many other better games I felt should have been on there that PUBG just kind of had for no for seemingly no reason. To this end, it's a pretty big win of Microsoft to have an exclusivity of on the title for the time being. Although there's no idea as to how long the exclusivity lasts, it seems like Microsoft has the upper hand when it comes to being the only console to have this title at least for the rest of 2018. If Bluehole can manage to fix some of the problems that plague the current version of the game, they'll surely be able to recapture some of the PC's release's attention. And that's another thing. They may have this game on the system, but unless you have an Xbox One X, and even then, the game isn't going to run very well. I think it runs like maybe 15 frames per second. Like it dips there constantly. Which, it sure, that can be playable if you get used to it, but from what I can tell, I personally haven't played it on Xbox. From, from what I can tell from other people, from like comparisons, it just does not look great on Xbox. Even the Xbox One X version doesn't look nearly as good as the, as the PC version, just from a, graphic, from a graphic standpoint. Let alone gameplay. So I'm not really sure if... Even if they did fix... All the problems I'm just not sure if having PUBG is really that big of a deal especially since it is a timed exclusive from what it, from what we can tell so once P once PlayStation has PUBG this article will be completely irrelevant or at least this point will so so yeah this I guess that's why it's at number 10 because it's the most you know most likely one to change but Still, it just kind of felt like you were just looking for something else to put in here, just so you can say they have 10 things that are better than PlayStation. It, although, honestly, the majority of this list is just a bunch of reaches. So let's, let's get into the next one, shall we? Games with gold. Oh, you mean that thing that Sony basically also has with the... PlayStation Now Game of the Month thingy. Um, okay. Or PlayStation, PSN, Game of, like, free Game of the Month. Okay. Yeah, ignore that and just say Games with Gold on Xbox is the only thing available like it now. Now, Okay. Oh, this website is so bad. Okay, guess that ad isn't going away. Cool. Even if Microsoft what was the first to introduce a paid online subscription. At least they offer the best rewards to go alongside it. Although this can be entirely subjective. Mm. Okay, let's continue. Microsoft games with gold are a lot more consistent in quality than the offerings that PlayStation Plus usually has. Although PS Plus has given games like Rocket League and Infinite Second Son, games with gold has been running for so much longer that the catalog of games is bound to be better. From exclusives like Force of Five and, and Killer Instinct to big budget games like Watch Dogs and Assassin's Creed, Games with Gold are pretty consistently offered great titles, whereas PlayStation Plus has dipped massively in quality and only recently seems to be picking up for good. Okay, I kind of get what you're saying. But the thing that PlayStation has over Xbox, which you already kind of pointed out, is that PlayStation consistently has a lot more first-party good titles coming out for it, meaning that, let's say, a year or two from now, they could easily offer, like, Horizon Zero Dawn on, on PlayStation Plus for that free game for the month, and people would jump all over that. Whereas... Two years from now, Microsoft could offer Gears of War. Not many people. That's. 
And even then, after you offered Gears of War, Sony just offered Persona 5, let's say. You can keep going back and forth like that, but eventually PlayStation could would always have more exclusives because that's just how PlayStation runs. Xbox just does not have the exclusives to, to in the end, match. Or Microsoft, yeah, Microsoft does not have the exclusives in the end to match what PlayStation can do on with their free game for a month service. So, I get that micro, uh, Xbox Game with Gold has more games in its backlog, but in the long run, I'm just not sure if it really, if it will really matter, especially when, oh, Forza 7, or sorry, Forza 5, okay, although Killer Instinct, that's, that's the game I want to play at some point. Forza, I'm just not sure if, if there's really as much value in that as something like an open, open world action RPG like Horizon Zero Dawn, or even like a straight up JRPG like Persona 5, which could both potentially be on PS Plus in a year or two. Again, maybe that's just speculative, but just, I guess essentially my point here is there's nothing necessarily better about Games with Gold as opposed to the PS, uh, PS Plus. <sighs> so, I, I get it. You're trying everything you can to say that Microsoft is doing better, but really, you're you're just not doing a great job of it because everything you've said so far, PlayStation has and sometimes even does better. And that was that is a trend that will continue throughout this entire article. <sighs> Nintendo has yet to introduce their paid subscription, but the initial announcement that it would include one temporary classic game did not go down well with fans. Microsoft is currently winning on this front. Are they though? I <sighs> Currently, maybe. But I don't know, Rocket League and Infamous, those are two pretty good games, especially Rocket League. I'm just not sure if Forza and Killer Instinct, which again, I said Killer Instinct, I, I like, that's still a pretty darn good game. I'm just not sure if those have the same value proposition as something like Infamous or even Rocket League. If they had PUBG on Games with Gold, that could be something, whereas... But actually, but even then, Fortnite's still free on PlayStation, so I'm actually not sure about that. Um, yeah, I don't know. If they had actually released Fable and Scalebound, then that could that could be something they could have with games of gold later down the line, and that could easily compete with something like a Horizon potentially or Infamous or Rocket League. But I'm just I don't know. This seems, again, it just seems like you're grasping at straws. It seems like it's a bit of a reach to me personally. And again, it's like you said, it's up. It's completely subjective. Maybe someone doesn't like racing or <coughs> or fighting games like Killer Instinct or, you know, or the more, um, or like shooting games, which, the, which those are the majority of the games that are on Games with Gold. I kind of feel PS Plus generally has more variety to it. That's just my opinion. But since you said it's entirely subjective, I'm allowed to give my opinion on this. Avatar customization. Oh yes, the thing that is super duper essential to any gaming experience. No, I'm... Really? Avatar customization? You're really gonna tell me that Xbox One is secretly beating PS4 and Nintendo Switch because you have avatars that you can customize. No. No. That's like saying the 3DS is winning because you can have, because you have um, different Nintendo themed backgrounds you can have on your home screen. It's, it's literally, it's just a little thing that you can, oh, look at that. It's not a big deal. It's something you'll, it's an aesthetic choice, really. What purpose do the avatars actually serve? The Miis on the Wii and Wii U actually served a purpose. 
they actually had their little apps and games on the console itself and also transitioned into things like Smash Bros. and Mario Kart. So they actually had a purpose on that on those consoles. Avatars don't really serve a purpose. What do avatars do that just a PSN name doesn't do? A username is exactly the same thing as an avatar, in my opinion. And many people actually kind of complained about the avatars and Xbox being too generic and too cool for school type. Just the way they stand, just the way they move. Sure, you have a lot of options, but I'm, I'm just, oh, this just, this really feels like a reach. And I legitimately, I want to look you in your face, in the eyes, and tell you, or and ask you, do you legitimately believe Xbox is better than PlayStation because of the avatars? I re I'm really curious what you would say to me, but let's let's just see what they had to say. At least print it here. No matter what console they've appeared on, Microsoft avatars have always beat Nintendo's Mii's and PlayStation's pictures. Okay. I would, I'm just scanning here. Uh, I, okay, whatever, I'll, I'll continue. The fact that PlayStation don't even have avatar customization system in, the, in place instantly puts them at the bottom of the pile here. The ill-fated PlayStation Home was actually pretty great, but that got the boot, so it doesn't really count anymore. But, uh... Why are you putting so much emphasis on the avatars? I don't understand this. What? Uh, maybe the next paragraph will explain it. Let's find out. While Sony seems content with pictures of game characters and recent and, re and random memes, Microsoft are constantly updating the avatar customization options to the point where they will eventually cater to disabled people too. There are so many choices of clothing in ways to make your avatar unique, that customizing them is like a game in itself. Yes, because having the avatars be their own game is such a big deal. And people can say the same thing about the Miis. If anything, you actually, there are games with the Miis. Wii Sports uses the Mii characters. There's even the, the Mii Plaza on the 3DS that uses your Miis in little mini games. And even making the Miis themselves is more or less like a game. If if you're if you're saying avatar customization in here is like a game, then the, the Miis on the Wii and Wii U are. Granted the Switch doesn't have Miis. And I understand that. And you're you're simply saying Xbox One is beating the Nintendo Switch. So maybe that's the mute point. But regardless, avatars is not... Having avatars on your system does not make your system better than anything else. It just doesn't. Nintendo are pretty famous for their Miis, but objectively speaking, Microsoft avatars have so much more personality and customization options that there isn't really any competition. Choosing your favorite color doesn't really come close to decking an avatar out to look like Batman. Okay. You, I still, you just didn't give a good reason as to why avatars are a big deal outside of them basically being like a game, which I already kind of said the Miis already are, if not more so. I, I still just don't understand why, ah, uh, maybe I'm putting too much effort into thinking about this, but just avatars are not a big deal. They are nothing to praise anyone over. Sure, the catering to disabled people, I do appreciate that. But having just the fact that they have avatars that you can customize does not make the system better. If they can incorporate them into other games and have like, you know, little apps on the system itself, then I could actually maybe concede this point. But as of right now, I, I don't see it. So I'll, I'll move on then.
The Forza series. The Forza series? Are you kidding me? It'd be one thing to say that the Nintendo Switch is secretly beating the PS4 and Xbox One because of the Zelda series. Because that's actually a, a highly acclaimed, well-received, decades-old franchise. Forza, it's a racing game. So there isn't really a lot of innovation you can do with each game. And they aren't, yes, their score generally, you know, fairly high, but they're not, you know, widely acclaimed game of the year contenders. Microsoft seems to think they are because they always start every year's E3 with a brand new one. and They have that car out on the stage and, and you know, and present this new game like it's the greatest thing ever, even though in my humble opinion, it doesn't really look that much different from the past one. Maybe that's just because I'm not into racing. But also, Forza is... Racing in general is a very niche, very niche um, genre. Something like Zelda or Mario have much more wide appeal. Even something like a Horizon Zero Dawn or God of War or any first-party titles from the other two, to be honest. But because you singled out Forza, not even Halo or Gears of War, which I feel have a broader audience, why did you single out Forza? Many people don't even consider it the best racing sim. Most people, actually I've heard many people say that Need for Speed or The Crew actually are better, feel better as racing games. So, oh, okay, I'll, I'll read what he has to say. We could really go all day comparing Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony for their exclusive franchises, but there's one area that Microsoft are consistently doing better than the others, it's the racing genre. More specifically, it's their lineup of Forza games. Both Forza Motorsport and the spin-off series Forza Horizon are beautiful games with tons of cars, customization options, and tracks to race on. Each game is stuffed to the brim with content, and generally speaking, each title improves massively on the previous games in the series. I'll read the whole thing before I get into anything else. Even if you don't like the simulation style of the, micro of the Motorsport series, the Forza Horizon series is all about having sandbox fun in a wacky environment. Despite this, the Horizon games are held to the same standard as the Motorsport games and are just as beautiful. Although Sony's Gran Turismo series is pretty beloved, it's fell on some pretty hard times as of late and hasn't really picked, picked itself up properly. The fact that Sport didn't even launch with single player with single player probably didn't help that much. Microsoft may generally be struggling for exclusives, but they but they're all certainly the king of racing games. Funny how you left out Mario Kart in there, and granted that's not a simulation style game. But if I'm not mistaken, Mario Kart consistently sells more than Forza games. I could be wrong about that. I don't have the stat sheet in front of me of every Forza game. But Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, a system that sold barely 14 million units, if even, sold over 8 million. That's, and that's an attached rate of over 50%. So, and I, I, like I said, I get it. It's not a simulation race racer, so maybe it doesn't actually apply here. But there still could be an argument for Mario Kart being a better, you know, better racing game than Forza. You have, you have the items, you have unique characters, you have unique carts, you have unique environments, unique tracks, just, and everything, every single game, like you, you know, like you said up here, improves massively on the previous games. So, I just, I just find it really weird that you're completely leaving out Nintendo of this argument entirely. Almost as if to say you didn't want to bring them up because you knew bringing them up would be detrimental to your point. And again, maybe I'm looking too, de too deep into this, but you singling out Forza just really confuses me because outside of Forza, Outside of maybe Halo, 
Gears of War at a stretch. What else does does Microsoft have that the other systems don't have? I honestly can't think of any exclusives right now, especially since every single exclusive is also on the also on Windows. So I could play Cuphead. I could even play Gears of War and Halo or Sunset Overdrive, another game I was actually kind of interested in. If I wanted to play that now, I could just get it on my PC. So I have literally zero reason to, to get these games on Xbox on Xbox One because I just get them on my PC. I'm not sure if Forza are on the PC, but regardless, let's just assume for the moment that yes, it was an is a fact, an in an undisputed fact that Forza is the better sim racer, or even the better the best racing game of of all racing games. You, that's really the only exclusive they have. There isn't much else outside of that, of, outside of Forza, Halo, and Gears of War that they can really tout as, oh, this is the game they're having this year. There's a lot of... There's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of third-party games that they have exclusive rights for advertising for, but that doesn't really count, in my opinion. And I could go on and on about all the Sony and especially Nintendo franchises that they have with 20, 30 years of, of experience and legacy with that Microsoft just cannot compete with. I so so sure you win you win with Forza, but what else do you got? Until you have an amazing epic open world action RPG like a Zelda or a Horizon or a God of War or an epic plat 3D epic platformer like um like Mario Odyssey. I I just I can't accept that Forza being the only game really puts them ahead, if even Forza being the best of, of these of the genre of game. Cross-platform play, which is funny because the article is titled 10 Ways Xbox One is Secretly Being PS4 and Nintendo Switch when Nintendo Switch is also also have cross-play with Xbox. <coughs> so if... Yes, Microsoft is definitely beating PlayStation with this. I don't understand why PlayStation doesn't do this, and they only do it. They do it sometimes with PC, but not Xbox. So I don't really understand um, why they don't do it with everybody. Um, but they don't. I I don't know. So this this point, I will agree. Xbox is beating PlayStation with, but not necessarily Nintendo because they're cross playing with each other. So, whether we're talking about the possibility of cross-platform play between home consoles or actually having interaction between PC and consoles, Microsoft is easily winning this one. For one thing, Microsoft are much more into the idea of cross-platform play than Sony are. They have come out on several occasions and expressed a much more positive opinion than it than it than Sony have, with some developers even claiming that Sony are the ones preventing it from happening. This doesn't look good on Sony, and it definitely makes Microsoft look a little better by comparison. The fact that Sony are so reluctant to bridge the gap is, in some games, just come across as arrogant on their part. And I will agree completely with that. I, having crossplay with, like, with, like he says down here, Rocket League, and Minecraft, and other games between PC, Microsoft, and Nintendo, that's a big deal. So, I don't understand why, why PlayStation just doesn't want to do that. I get that they're at the top, so yes, they are getting very arrogant and kind of stubborn with a lot of things like this. So, I guess it may... 
I guess that makes sense in that aspect, but even then it really doesn't because, like, I don't know, just <coughs> whenever, <coughs> whenever PlayStation's at the top, they always seem to kind of do stuff like this. So it's not really surprising. Um, and I honestly feel like it's it's good for Microsoft to do something like this to try to get some of the goodwill back from the gamers. And Nintendo too on, on that aspect. Their online might not be the best, but you can still play Rocket League with PC and Microsoft players, so at least they have that going for them. Meanwhile, Microsoft are actively encouraged, encouraging cross-platform play for games like Rocket League and Minecraft. Even more often, even more than that, Microsoft are essentially trying to merge their Xbox One install base with their PC base, allowing games to be played between both consoles. <coughs> now, a lot of people actually kind of see that as a bad thing. Um, because since you have essentially PC and Xbox be essentially the same at this point, like me, most people don't really see buying the Xbox as that much of a value as opposed to just buying a more powerful PC that you can do other stuff on and also play games like Halo, Cuphead, Gears of War, etc. So in one aspect, it's great that people can cross-play on the other's hand, is kind of a detriment of the console as a whole. So I'm not really sure if that particular point really helps helps your argument. Although this this may have ruined the word exclusive for Microsoft, and it really has, like to a fault, it's also helped bridge the two consoles much closer together, which hasn't which can't really be said for Nintendo or Sony. But wait, Nintendo actually does crossplay with Microsoft with Rocket League and upcoming Minecraft. I think there's one or two other indie games that also has crossplay between them. So, you how are you saying it can't be said for Nintendo when they're actually ones actively, you know, trying to do that? Which is weird because Nintendo generally is a more family friendly, you know, base, and Xbox is generally considered the more hardcore, yeah, you know, hardcore gamer box. So them two having crossplay is really surprising. And also, just kind of something that's kind of bugging me here. You ended the last paragraph by saying allowing games to be played between the two consoles. Oh, sorry. Um, where do you say here? Uh, here we go. Okay. The fact that Sony are so reluctant to bridge the gap in some games is comes across as arrogant on their part. And then you say it on here. It also helps bridge the two consoles much closer together. <clears throat> And then Microsoft are essentially trying to merge their Xbox One and PC base. <coughs> essentially, you said the same thing three separate times, which is just never... That's really something you should try to avoid when, when writing anything, really. Repeating yourself just kind of makes your point. There's, there's repeating yourself for emphasis, but when, when you're writing it... It just comes off as a bit tacky. So I'm especially when that last thing you say bridge the gap between the consoles also applies to one of the other to one of the other opposition you're listing right after. It just I don't know, just something about the way you did that just kinda of irks me. So oh, hopefully I made that point there. Let's continue. The HoloLens. You know, the thing that's not released to the public yet. Arguably has less features, especially game-wise, than the PlayStation VR. And will you go away? Thank you. <laughs> uh, and is it a is it a cool device? Sure, I haven't actually used one yet because, like I said, they're not released to the public, as far as I'm concerned. It's a cool device, but. It's not helping Xbox One in any significant way as of now. It it doesn't have any application for gaming outside of, I think, a Minecraft mode, which, if I'm not mistaken, can only really be used on PCs at this point. So even then, that's not helping Xbox any. 
So let's let's just see what he has to say. Let's call this a future victory, shall we? Okay, I I guess you've already you're already reaching for past victory, so you might as well stretch even further in the future. Why not? As much fun as virtual reality is, it was never really going to be the big hit that the big companies want it to be. I'll finish this paragraph first. The lack of any meaningful experiences means that, as it is, virtual reality really doesn't have much of a future in the industry. What are you going on about? Sure, VR isn't as big as people thought it would be, I'll give you that much. Many people were thinking it would be like the next big thing. PSVR would sell like 40 million units right out of the gate. They specifically made the PS4 Pro to better integrate with PSVR. And you also have Oculus and the um, HTC Vive and other, and other uh, kind of smaller VR headsets. So it's still a big deal right now. A lot of people are still, you know, trying to do stuff with it. And many, many games are either being made exclusively for, exclusively for um, VR or have VR modes. Like Resident Evil 7 has a VR mode. That uh, Star Wars Battlefront VR game. That Batman VR game. Um, I think uh, No Man's Sky is getting a, a VR mode. Skyrim VR, Fallout 4 VR. There are plenty of unique experiences that you can only really have in VR. So I don't really understand how you're saying it doesn't have much of a future. People are just now really starting to grasp how to use this thing. You didn't see all the... <sighs> I'll... Okay, I'll continue. On the other hand, arg augmented reality feels like the next big technological step in really connecting us with our games. VR didn't? You're literally in the game. You're, you're looking around, seeing the game environment around you. How is that not connecting you to the game? It just seems like you're leaving out information, or more, even worse, ignoring information just so your point sounds better. You're downplaying VR just so you can say augmented reality is better when one actually connects you directly into the game much better than augmented reality does. AR is really cool. But as far as gaming aspect goes, I feel VR actually has a beat. You're actually in the house in Resident Evil 7 looking around hoping that monsters or or whatever are not behind you at any given moment. If you if you get attacked, it's right there in front of you. AR, I'm just not sure if it can really do that style of integration with games. So there's no indication on when the HoloLens will become a mainstream public product. The technology behind it is leaps and bounds ahead of anything that competitors are doing at this moment. From the few gameplay demos that we've been shown on Minecraft, HoloLens looks like it could truly revolutionary, le revolutionize some aspects of gaming. Besides just being a great piece of tech, it looks like it actually has some genuine gaming potential, which can't yet be said for virtual reality. What? What? It can't. Let me reread that entire sentence. Besides just being a great piece of tech, it looks like it could actually have some genuine gaming potential, which can't be said for virtual reality. I'm... I'm sorry. You're wrong. You just are wrong. VR is something people in the 60s predicting the future were expecting to happen. This is... <sighs> hmm. People have been literally trying, they've been trying to get VR working ever since the Virtual Boy. <laughs> and I mean, that failed tremendously, but still, the idea has been around. People have been wanting this for, for years. 
people have been wanting to actually be inside the game, fully immersed in the game. I personally don't really want that. But I know many people that do. I know many people that actually have VR headsets and are really impressed by them. So, you saying there's no gaming potential yet for VR, when if anything there is far more potential for VR than there is AR, I don't understand what you're trying to say here. I, ugh, I just... I don't get it. I, You really... You just didn't really give much of an argument for AR outside of the little Minecraft... The little bit of Minecraft information we have. Outside of that, what other gaming... What other gaming applications could it really have? Pretty much everything I feel I I'm just I just I'm just trying to think of anything AR could do that VR doesn't or can't. And right now I'm kinda of coming up blank. May you know, maybe two or three years down the line, once once the HoloLens actually does get integrated into the Xbox, they'll show us something freaking amazing and I'll change my mind on this. As of right now, it kinda of seemed like VR is Yes, it's still early and it's, you know, it's still early, but even though it is early, we've still gotten some pretty cool experiences out of it. I'm not really sure why you're so, why you're bagging so hard on VR, but whatever, I'll finish this, this page. No one out there is doing anything like HoloLens, let alone Sony or Nintendo. So Microsoft are pretty much owning this one. They're owning this one because you downplayed every single aspect of VR just because you can. That's really what this was. You had no real argument here, so you essentially it came down to VR or AR is better than VR because I said so. That is never a good argument to have, period. So uh, uh, let's move on from this. Xbox Games Pass. This is legitimately one of the very few points that he actually does bring up. Um, there is nothing like Games Pass on PlayStation or Nintendo, and it's a pretty cool concept. I think you spend about 20 bucks a month to get a huge library of exclusives, and I think also some non-exclusives, just to play for free for that month. I think it pretty much launched with Sea of Thieves, and many people play that game and bought it afterwards because they like the free trial. That's it's basically a free trial for these games, and I actually kind of appreciate that. So, I will admit this: this is something where, if if Xbox keeps doing this and perfects it, I think they could actually have a winner on their hands in this particular case. The one of few cases where they're actually winning in this article. The Xbox One Game Pass can be neither a really good thing or a really bad thing depending on how you look at it. On one hand, it doesn't really give users unlimited access to a game as they never truly own it until they actually buy it. On the other hand, or relatively, for a relatively cheap asking price, Microsoft gives players access to hundreds of different games at once. And yeah, I'll admit that, like I said, it's basically a free trial. Although if you play a game and beat it within that one month, then there's pretty much no point for you to rebuy it, which is why launching it with something like Sea of Thieves, which turned out to be not the greatest game ever, but still, it was a good game to launch with it because it's more or less like a Destiny or something like that where it's more or less a living game where there's not really a story, there's not really an end game. So you can just kind of play it forever. So if you liked it, you liked playing it that month and then wanted to keep playing it, you then have to buy it. So I feel like that was actually pretty smart for them. Best of all, the pass actually allows you access to some of the console's newest games, including titles like Sea of Thieves. If, if either this year or next year, whenever Halo 6 comes out, if Halo 6 launches on Xbox Game Pass, 
that would be huge. I'm not sure if if it would be like the biggest deal ever, but it would still it it would probably turn some heads. You have this one of the few huge IPs that Xbox is known for come out free for a month. Some people who are on the fence about Xbox could easily just jump in, play Halo 6, and if they don't like it, they only spent 20, really only spent 20 bucks on it, but they also have these other great experiences that they could have been playing on the side. If they do really like it, they can they can actually buy it and then continue playing multiplayer or finish the story if they didn't get to that. So I feel like this is actually a pretty, pretty good idea. Again, if they can just, I don't know, there, there's a couple of things here and there that I feel they could improve on, but they just perfect it. I feel like it could actually be a big deal, especially with the in the, in the next gen console race. If this is the case for future releases for the console, this could be a huge business venture for Microsoft as players are sure to see the value as more and more games come out on the console. At the very least, this, this subscription service is leaps and bounds ahead of Sony's PlayStation Now. Yeah, I will admit that. Um, PlayStation Now was not great, especially since you're straight up streaming the services, or you're streaming the games, so they got kind of laggy, and like, just nothing really good came out of PSN Now. Um, so... Yeah, Xbox Game Pass is basically that, but done better. So you got one out of, what are we on, four? So yeah, out of six so far, you've got one. Good job. Backwards compatibility. Again, another thing that like is actually something I honestly wish the Nintendo Switch did, but since the Nintendo Switch has the cartridges and their weight, they're even smaller than the in the 3DS cartridges, they couldn't really feasibly do it. But, yeah, backwards compatibility, that's another thing that Xbox kind of does have over the competition. Although I think there are some PS2 and maybe PS3 games you can buy on the on the PlayStation um, online store. I could be wrong about that, but if that is true, then this particular case... It's a little undercut by that, but it's not nearly as expansive as Xbox's backwards compatibility. So, yes, you. this is also relatively a win. This is easily one of the biggest and best things that the Xbox One is going, is going for it right at the moment, and it's something that Microsoft clearly know. Nintendo used to be the king of backwards compatibility with the Wii U, but it seems like they're more set on following PlayStation example of this generation. Offering up their old games as enhanced editions is all well and good, but it isn't really backwards compatibility. Yeah, and when they literally change from discs to cartridges, they they had no other choice but to try to sell these games in a different way. So I kind of wish some, like Donkey Kong was priced a little less, maybe 50, 40 even, would have been better, but it's selling decently, so I mean, it's working for them. So, for what they had to work with, I they made the decision to go with cartridges, so, like, I understand them not having it. PlayStation, I'm not really sure why they didn't, why they haven't gotten backwards compatibility straight up. Like, since, I think, mid-PS3 they took it out. I'm not sure why they did that, but they did, so whatever. Sony are currently the worst for this. The small amount of PS2 games they offer all cost way more money than they should, and PlayStation Now rarely seems worth the asking price. Yeah, I think I think uh, the PS2 games are like $15. And like most of them are... You can buy them just on eBay or whatever for like 10 or less. So yeah, that's, that's not a great deal. With the Xbox One, all you need to do is own the game and put it in your console and you're ready to go. That's exactly how it should be done. Even now, Microsoft are continuing to update games and allow them to play in 4K. Playing Xbox original games in 4K is really funny to me, so I, I appreciate them doing stuff like that. Playing the original Red Dead Redemption in 4K is, is truly a sight to behold, and something that no other console allows you to do. That is a good point. So, yeah. Um, 
this is something that I hope Nintendo continues to do going forward. Like if they if they keep going with cartridges, then I hope they keep they keep the backwards compatibility going forward. And Sony, I would honestly hope they do the same thing too. So yes, good job. You have two. You have two wins out of what seven at this point. Controller customization. Oh boy. Okay. So I made fun of the avatars for being completely superfluous and superfluous and dumb. This is even worse. Saying that place that PlayStation and Nintendo are getting secretly beat by Microsoft because you can't customize your controller? Are you kidding me? Well, you pay $150 to get a red skin on your controller. Whoopty freaking do. I I don't understand how this how this could be a big deal, especially since there are actually people on the you know on the internet you can send your PlayStation and even Nintendo controllers to them and they'll they'll send it back to you with a unique skin on it for like 80 or less. <laughs> so having I get that it's officially licensed by Microsoft Designs. $150 for a controller? That's you can buy an Elite controller for that. And if you want an Elite controller customized, you have to pay even more. So like I don't <laughs> I don't understand why this is a big deal. Oh, this baffles me. I don't Let's just see what he has to say, I guess. Say what you will about whether or not you prefer Xbox One controller to the other consoles, but one thing is unarguable. The level of customization that Xbox offers for the controllers is unmatched. Big deal. I... Yeah, sure. They're technically winning in... In, um... They're technically winning in how much customization you can give to, to a controller. But what does that mean for the actual gamer? What does that mean for how you play the game? It... I... It's... The, honestly, I feel this is even more pointless to bring up than avatars were, because at least the avatars was actually an interaction there. People actually see that online. If you only play online games with no couch co-op games, period, no one else is going to see these these customized controllers. No one else but you is going to be able to experience that, so I don't really understand why this is a big deal, especially since you're paying $150 to do this. And if, if my number for that is wrong, please tell me. But regardless, any like really any amount you have to pay... I'm just not sure if that will be worth it just to say, oh, Xbox is winning in this aspect. I just don't wonder, I just don't know if having to pay for it is worth the is literally worth the price. So, uh I oh this is uh, <laughs> uh I I I'm literally speechless. Like I I guess I'll read the rest of the article, the rest of this page, and then see if I can muster up anything else to say of say about this dumb point. As it stands now, the Nintendo Switch and the PS4 both only really, o both only really offer color changes, as and the occasional skin to celebrate a recently released game. Microsoft actually allows you to essentially create a controller that is entirely your color, your own color scheme. It's a pretty minor thing that ends up giving. It ends up making the Xbox feel a whole lot more friendly than the other consoles. The Xbox feels more friendly because you have to pay to have a different controller skin? I, I'm sorry, I just don't see that. <laughs> I don't understand how the console feeling more friendly to you is that big of a deal. It, <sighs> oh, this literally hurts my brain just to try to wrap my head around why why you're focusing so hard in on this like and this is number two the last two the last two things i mentioned were actually big deals and those things were actually things that i feel actually could propel the next xbox potentially to winning in the end 
if Microsoft had the Game Pass or backwards compatibility from the start, they could have actually had, maybe not actually winning, but they could have had a couple more million units sold by now. They could maybe be in, in the 40 to 50 million by now, just because the value proposition of those two services. This should have been back with number eight or nine. Way back, way back then, if even. I think Avatar's number eight or nine. Yeah, it should have been around there. I don't understand why this is so high up. It's technically a win, but at what, literally at what cost? You're, you're making the console feel more friendly by, by having a controller only you can appreciate. Like, best case scenario, a friend comes over and you're like, hey, look at this controller I have. Hey, that's cool. Where can I get a cult controller like that? Oh, go on Microsoft's website. Oh, that's oh cool. Oh, I have to pay for it. I don't know if I'm willing to... Like, statistically, your friend is not willing to pony up a hundred or so dollars to get a to get a brand new customized controller. I, I just don't see that happening on, on, on a daily basis. So sure, once you have the controller, it might feel more friendly to you. But actually going through the process of having to order it, pay for it, have it shipped to you, I'm just... That's just too much of a barrier of entry, especially when there are other people online who will do it for cheaper if you want that done. Ugh. Okay, I'll... Giving players options is always a good thing, especially when the controllers look as great as they do. It may be expensive, but it's actually worth the asking, the asking price. I... I'm not sure about that. $150 for a matte black controller or a yellow one or a blue with orange accents. I'm just not sure if it's worth $150 for a brand new controller that you that you customize. I I just I I I don't see it. I literally don't understand why you think this is a big deal. <laughs> Again, like, just like the majority of the stuff in this article, it really feels like you're just grasping for straws. You're reaching for anything you can think of. If your argument was the Xbox One controller was a better controller than the PS4 and Switch controller, I personally wouldn't have to disagree with you, especially since the Xbox One controller still uses batteries, which I don't understand. Even the Elite controller still uses batteries. Uh, I don't, I'll, I'll never understand that. But still, that could potentially be a decent point you have. That's, that's an opinion. That's a, a fairly valid opinion that you could actually bring to this and give valid points. And I could actually maybe side with you with that. But you saying that the, the customization controllers are worth the price... Just that alone is what makes Xbox better. I, I just, I don't believe you. I'm sorry. Actually, not sorry. <laughs> I don't believe you. The return of the original Xbox controller should tell you how Microsoft feels about offering their consumers options on how to play. Honestly, like, I don't see how this is really any different than having the Pro Controller or many different kinds of Joy-Con colored controllers that Nintendo Switch offers. And like I said, there are there are people online who will easily sell you customizations for PlayStation and uh, Nintendo controllers for way lower than the Microsoft is asking. So, at least as far as Nintendo goes, they give you just as many, if not more, options to play. They give you two controllers right out of the box. And you can essentially customize the way your console looks by getting the Splatoon, the Splatoon bundle that has the the green and pink, the Mario bundle that has matte red controllers, the the red and blue one, or the plain old black one. So, yeah, I don't, I just, I just don't see it. Essentially, that that's what this comes down to. I I just don't see it. So on to the last one. The Xbox One X specs. 
And yeah, when I first read this article, this was essentially what I expected to be number one. Because really, technically speaking, this is the thing that Microsoft is pushing. This is the thing that Microsoft is winning with. PS4 Pro is definitely not even close with powerful the Xbox One X. Nintendo Switch isn't even the same league as the PS4 standard. So yes, the Xbox One is for sure winning in the power race. But when you don't have any games to play on it, what's the point? I, I could actually see someone justifiably buying a PS4 Pro just to play Horizon Zero Dawn or even God of War in 4K. But what games are there to play on Xbox One X? Forza? Halo 5? Which many people didn't even really like anyway? Yes, I, I do agree that having Red Dead Redemption in 4K is a big deal. But you gotta have more than that. You got to you got to you got to have exclusives to pay, to match the power. That's something I feel Nintendo is really good at. Their consoles are never are never very powerful at least since the GameCube. But the games match the system perfectly. The games utilize the power the system does have to make it run smoothly, look great, play excellently. And Sony like I said, Horizon Zero Dawn is the perfect partner piece to go with the PS4 Pro. Microsoft really doesn't have much outside of PUBG. And even then, it's still not that great of a product as it is right now, especially compared to the PC version. So, yes, you have a point. Xbox One has better specs. But, but it really doesn't matter if there's nothing to really play on it. So... No matter how well the other consoles are doing at the moment, there is one inescapable truth. Xbox One X is the most powerful home console of all time. Xbox One X is truly a marvel in how much it manages to pack into one machine. Capable of native 4K at 60 frames per second, the Xbox One X can rival some of the most reliable gaming PCs in the market, which is a lot more than can be said for the PS4 Pro. The Xbox One X had a library of games as powerful as a Switch or PlayStation, there would be absolutely no doubt that it would be much higher regarded. Yeah, you just admit it, there's nothing to play on Xbox. You literally just explained why this point doesn't matter. Because there's nothing to play on the, on the Xbox One, getting a Switch has much more of a value proposition because. You can play Mario, Zelda, Splatoon, Arms, Kirby, Donkey Kong now, Bayonetta. And sure, they're not going to look nearly as good. They're not going to be in 4K, but you can take it anywhere. You can hand off the Joy-Con to a friend and play local multiplayer anywhere. With the PS4 Pro, like I've already said. Um, God of War, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, Nier Automata, all these games can be played beautifully in 4K. Xbox One just doesn't really have much to back up this this great these great graphics you're trying to tout. So I yeah, I just don't I'm just not sure if this is really worth I'm just not really sure if it's worth paying five hundred dollars on a on an Xbox One X just to play Red Dead Redemption in 4K, which is really the only really the only game you've brought up where Having 4K is really worth it. As it is now, Microsoft's technical accomplishment is mostly being overlooked because of a lack of games, which is a shame. That's the way it should be. If there's nothing to play, you shouldn't. There's no way to really experience the 4K ness. Yeah. So sure, it's a shame that Xbox doesn't have more great games, but. That's just the way it is, so people are looking over the way how great the Xbox One X graphically is. It also somehow manages to be the only gaming console with a 4K Blu-ray player built into it. It's pretty embarrassing that that's the case, but good on Microsoft for including it. Yeah, the 
PS4 Pro not having a 4K Blu-ray player, that's weird, especially since Sony um, at least partly owns the company that produces Blu-rays, so I don't really know why they didn't do that. You can still, you can still play Blu-rays on it, but not 4K Blu-rays, so I don't, yeah, I don't know what that's all, what that's all about. Um, so, yeah, um, throughout this entire article, you made two and a half good points. The backwards compatibility and the Xbox Game Pass. Those were the only two decent points you made throughout this entire article. And the Xbox One X's power is also is also a good point. However, there's nothing to play on it, so it doesn't matter. Everything else, the other seven and a half points you made in this article were either irrelevant, could be explained away, or the other two are actually doing it better. Like avatars and game and controller customization. Like, why did you even put that in? And PUBG is gonna be it's not gonna be exclusive in a year, and Fortnite, many people actually like Fortnite better. I know I personally would rather play Fortnite. Having saying that Forza wins in in sim racing games when you left out the fact that Xbox doesn't have really any other exclusives to really tell when Sony Micro Sony and Nintendo have that in spades. So, yeah, I, I just don't see it. I don't see how all of these combined make Microsoft secretly beat Sony or Nintendo right now. Would I appreciate someone actually, you know, beating Sony at this point? Yes, especially since, like you stated, having cross-platform play, which, again, Nintendo actually also has, so... That's kind of a mute point. Having cross-platform play is something that Microsoft is actually kind of praised for, and that's a lot. Of, that's something a lot of people want Sony to have. So once Sony is knocked down a peg by one of the other two, maybe they'll maybe they'll consider it. But right now, it's not looking at like that because they're at the top and they don't see any see a need to change. So if Microsoft or Nintendo can come in and you know try to challenge them a little bit then maybe they'll see the need to change their ways. A healthy market is not a bad thing. When, when one wins, theoretically all of them should also win. So I would actually appreciate if Microsoft could be competitive next-gen, but as of right now, especially the majority of the points you made, I'm just not seeing it. So what do you think down below? Sorry this was a super long video. I didn't expect it to go over an hour long. Holy crap. But... I had a lot to say about it, um, so yeah. What do you, what do you guys have to say about it? Um, do you think Microsoft is actually winning? Do uh, do you agree with any of the points he made here? Um, do you think any of these any of these points could actually translate over to the next Xbox and potentially actually allow them to win next generation, especially the Game Pass? I'm I'm really hoping they bat and backwards compatibility. I really hope they continue that into the future. Leave thoughts down below. I can have a discussion going, and I'll see you.